My wife has already assured me that I have to send it back. How's it going today, guys? Uh, we've got something a little bit different today, and I've got a little bit of a story I want to tell you. Um, over the summer, I was contacted by a representative from a company called Ventrac, and Ventrac makes what's known as articulating tractors. The, they kind of pivot in the middle, uh, so they're very good for tight spaces. Um, so a representative contacted me from Ventrac, and I, I didn't know much about them, and I googled them real quick, and it turns out a lot of guys use Ventrax uh, for snow removal. Uh, so, so after doing my research, I realized they make one with a heated cab, and you can also get a snow blower and a push blade and a broom for it. So, uh, you know, things kind of was the middle of my season, and I didn't really do much about it, but eventually, you know, I, I asked the representative if it would be possible for me to demo um, a machine with a heated cab. Uh, and, and also a Kubota diesel engine. It turns out they have Kubota diesels. Uh, so my, my dream, uh, and I always wonder if maybe I should set my goals higher, um, was to someday clear my driveway in an enclosed heated cab. Uh, my neighbor has a John Deere with a Curtis cab on it, and he just looks snug as a bug in there. Uh, so since I saw him, I thought it would be really cool, um, since that's what this company makes, if I could get one to demo. Um, they also make a ton of other attachments. I've done research. Uh, they've got lawnmowers for these things. They've got trenchers for these things. I mean, they're really expanding the line. And the whole concept with Ventrac is it's a very maneuverable machine. You can get in a tight spot, uh, and you can also change out your attachments very quickly. Uh, so they also have, like, you could go from a mower deck mowing and switch over to, like, a leaf blower in minutes in the fall. I don't want to say too much about the company Ventrac because I haven't done a ton of research yet. What I'm gonna to try to do though is just stick with what I know and what I've seen. So, so yesterday, uh, a factory rep came out and they dropped me off uh, this Ventrac, which is a 3400Y. And this is what their, their smaller machine is. They make a bigger one as well. Uh, this has a, a little bit under 25 horse Kubota diesel in it. It's got a heated cab and uh, it's a really, a really nice machine. Uh, and they brought me a broom and they brought me a snowblower. And it turns out uh, we're in the midst of getting a snowstorm. We had a very mild winter and it's now gonna start snowing. Uh, it just started snowing about an hour ago and we should get anywhere from six to 12 inches of snow. So this is gonna be a good chance to kinda, to, to kinda check it out and put it through its paces and, and show you that. But the video I wanna do now is I just kinda wanna walk through the machine. You know, I've come out and I've looked at the machine a few times and I've push the buttons, and I figure maybe there's some guys out there that are like, Ventrac, Ven what? What's a Ventrac? Uh, I'd show you some more about it. And I wanna say that, you know, um, my initial impressions are just, the reason I wanted to demo it and get my hands on it and spend some time in it is because I'm used to the, the name brand machinery, and I really don't know what Ventrac's all about, and, um, I haven't been to trade shows very much um, since I had kids, uh, so, so I haven't been doing the trade shows, and maybe they've been there, but I, I wasn't familiar with the name. So I wanted to get one to kind of to uh, kick the tires, touch the metal, and I want to say that initially, um, everything I've seen of it is it is a heavy-duty machine. One of my fears was that I was going to touch this machine, and uh, the metal was gonna be kind of like a residential lawn tractor is, that kind of flimsy metal, and it's, it's not, it's, it's heavy duty. And I gotta tell you, when the guy took it off the trail yesterday um, with a Kubota diesel, I mean, even at an idle, that Kubota diesel just feels ready to, to kick butt. Uh, and after about 15 minutes, once it warmed up, and we put the heat on in the cab, it was, it was really cool. Uh, and they make models, you, you can get them with a heated cab, without a heated cab, and this heated cab does remove, you can take it off, they say it takes about an hour and a half to take it off. So you could, uh, you could have a cab for the winter and not a cab for the summer. But um, <laughs> I gotta say that so far I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with the machine and my wife has already assured me that I have to send it back. Uh, so I'm, I'm not gonna get to keep it, but um, I'm going to admit that it was, it was a lot of fun, uh, even before I've driven it and done snow with it, I know that it's going to be uh, very fun to do. This one's going to be real boring if you're not into this kind of stuff, but if you are, I'm going to walk you completely around the machine, 
and just, you know, kind of show you what this, this vent track is all about. Right here, this is the, uh, this is the snow blower attachment. And then here we go, here is the, uh, here is the broom. And here's a look up at the front of the tractor. And then uh, here is your right hand side. And you can see if you take a look right in the middle here, the way this model works is it articulates, you sit in the front and it articulates at the back right here, that's where the articulation is. The larger model actually, uh, the, I think the engine's in the front and it articulates, the front articulates and you sit in the back. Um, and then, can't really see the cab, but I want you to just kind of notice how big the cab is. Even though it's a, it's a compact tractor, the cab is very spacious. You don't feel confined at all. And it's got really, really good visibility out of that. And then I'll just show you here, the way it powers the attachments is there's a belt down there. So uh, to disconnect it, there's a little springy under here, a springy thing under here. You disconnect that spring, which has an, an idler uh, tension on it. You disconnect that spring, you take the, uh, the belt off, and then there's a couple hooks under there that hook the attachment on. You slide the machine back. Some attachments have hydraulics on them too. This, this one does to power the, doesn't power the broom. The, the power of the attachment is the belt. So the belt is used to, to power the snowblower or to push the, the broom. And then the hydraulics are actually used to control the direction of the attachment. Or with the snowblower, the hydraulics are used to control the chute, how the chute um, goes back and forth. And then they have, with the snowblower, they have an electric switch in the cab that actually controls the distance that the snowblower goes. And then in the back here, this is the working end, and I just want to, uh, I want to show you one cool feature about this tractor too, one of the many, is it's got a quick disconnect here. So this is connected to the battery, so right now I've got it actually off. Uh, and you don't have to leave it off, but if it's going to be sitting for a while, um, you can just turn the battery off, and then when you're going to use the machine, you just move that lever down. And it's something that's, it's very simple, but it's very, uh, very common sense, you know. I think the thing I like about this machine is it's, um, it's got common sense, and this is a nice feature because uh, I know my international truck, if I let it sit more than two weeks in the winter, the battery's dead because it has a drain on it. And this way, you just push it up and no drain. So if, if it's sitting all winter, that's fine. You can just push it down and, and start the battery in the spring. So under here is a 25 horse Kubota diesel. Uh, the fuel tank is on this side. And all you got to do to get to the fuel and the battery is there's just one little thing here. You pull back and then this slides open. And this is going to give us access to our fuel tank, our battery, and then this is like a little electronic control they have that um, there's lights on it. So if there's a problem with the tractor, it'll, it'll give you some tips as far as where to look uh, if there is an issue. And I did go out yesterday and I, uh, I filled up the tank. We've moved to the other side now and I just want to show you this is the, uh, the radiator and, and check out the size of this thing. That's freaking huge. You'll, you'll, never, uh, you'll never overheat this engine. And uh, there's our... Uh, there's our little Kubota diesel. And there's a panel in the back here which comes off as well. So there's a, there's a canister air filter in there, which once you take this back panel off, would be very easy to access. Uh, and then the oil fill for the, uh, the Kubota is, uh, is right down here. The oil, the oil check, the check oil is right down there. Very easy to get to. And then there's where you would add your oil. And I have yet to figure out where the hydraulic fluid goes. There's hydraulic oil expansion tank is down there. But I don't know where you actually put the hydraulic oil. Hopefully I'll figure that one out. Uh, and then just as I was peeking over there, the, the oil filter for your... Can you guys see that? 
the oil filter is right over here for your, your little Kubota diesel. And then what this thing on the back is, is this is a sander, it's a drop sander. So um, there's a little uh, a box hitch on there. So there's a 12 volt connection in the back. Here, there's a, there's a 12 volt connection in the back there. So if you wanna use the sander, all you have to do is hook up a 12 volt connection. Two guys can pick up the sander and slide it in the back and, and hook it up. And then there's a remote control for it. So it's very easy if you wanna add the sander in the middle of the storm to do that. And then I also just think it's cool that the machine has a little hitch in the back. So you could pull a trailer and, and I would guess you could pull a, you know, a decent sized trailer um, if you're doing you know, grounds maintenance with some mulch in it or just to get rid of debris. But I think it's a cool feature. I, I, moving my log splitter around would be a nice, uh, a nice thing with that little hitch. I think that's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. So I just wanna show you what it looks like to get in the cab to show you how comfortable uh, it really is. You just open the door there. And you can sit right in. And then it's actually got tilt steering. So you push this lever down and you can put the steering wheel this far down if you want to drive like this, or you can put it, uh, you know, this far up. Um, but it's very, very spacious, very comfortable. All right, it's a little bit uh, tough to get a good focus in the cab, so we'll do our best, but um, let me just, uh, let me just kind of show you how the cab works, some of the features in the cab. And the first thing is, is here's the key. The key is right down here. Because it's got the diesel, it does have glow plugs. I, I have the power turned off right now. But what you would do here, let me, let me push this lever down and move the steering wheel. So what you would do to start it is you would move it to the glow plug position and then you've got a switch right here, a little light right here for your glow plugs. Wait for that to go off and then start the machine normally. On the right hand of the steering uh, column here is the parking brake. And so to start it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be all the way back here got three positions. You've got park and then you've got this middle position where it, it returns to, uh, I don't know if it's called return to neutral, but if you let go of the lever, the machine slows down. And then if you put it all the way forward, uh, the machine is going to just keep going. If you, there's a lever to, we'll get to the lever later, but if you let go of the lever, the machine keeps going. It, it's not really total cruise control, but the machine keeps going. Uh, and one thing I did notice yesterday is if if you've got it in the middle position where it returns to neutral or slows down when you let go of the lever is, is it's harder to push the lever. So you really want to just, once you're comfortable driving the machine, just push that lever all the way forward and, uh, and that's, how you, that's how you move it around. There is a pedal there you can use to, uh, to control the movement so your foot could definitely fit on there. And if you take a look, there's a little, this is the lever I talk about. So you could move it that way as well. But um, I think most people, most people must use the lever, although I guess they, they put the pedal in there just in case you don't want to. Uh, I've got a little horn over here. And then uh, I guess there's some gauges over here. Not really sure exactly what those gauges are. Battery, coolant temperature, temperature of something else there. Um, and then we've got our fuel, we've got uh, full, half and almost empty. This thing over here is for the sander. And the cool thing about that sander is it's, first off, it's stainless steel and it's designed to drop the product right behind the machine, which I know a lot of guys are, are um, uh, if you're doing sidewalks, it's awesome. I, I don't do sidewalks, I don't do snow removal at all. Um, but the way this works is if you've got the, the sander plugged into 12 volt power at the back of the machine, all you do is turn the sander on and then if you hit one, it'll just start going at the, the slowest rate. And if you hit six, it'll start going at the fastest rate. And these are all in between rates. And then you just hit the button again to stop it. So I think they said that that can hold like 200 pounds of uh, something called magic salt. And so you just, <clears throat> as you were doing your sidewalks, you would just push the one, whatever, to drop your magic salt just where you're clearing. It's not a rotary spreader, it's a drop spreader. So it's just gonna drop that material right, right where you're clearing. Uh, we do have a cup holder, pretty cool. And then um, over here, this is uh, this is kind of where all the all the magic happens. So 
this button is our is our implement control. So this is how we're going to turn the mower on and the snowblower on or whatever. Uh, this is for the lights on the tractor. There's one headlamp on the tractor right here. It's a nice LED light. You see that right there? So this is the headlamp. So, we, you know, the cab's got lights on it, but if you just got the tractor, uh, this is where that light would be. We've got our throttle over here, and again with the Kubota diesel, it's 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 an idle, but boy, it's uh, it's got a nice feel and sound to it. And then this is our power to the back. See that little picture there to the back, 12 volt for the sander. So if you want to sand, I'm not really sure which one is on and off, but one of those is on or off. And then we're not using this one right now. And then this is what's called the SDLA lever. And I have, I've still got to kind of get my head around this one completely, but it's speed, direction, lift, speed, direction, lift, and I forget what the A was. But um, what you do, let me see if I can hold the camera with the other hand. What you do is you hold your, your hand on this lever, and if you want to go forward, you push it forward, and if you want to go back, you pull it back. If you want to raise or lift your implement, you push it this way to raise the implement, this way to lower the implement. And then this one controls the hydraulics to the implement. So for the snowblower or the broom, you would just kind of rock your hand like this, and that's going to control the, the hydraulic cylinder that's actually on the implement. So if I move it this way, it'll move one way, and this way it'll move the other way. So you can be pushing, and then you just kind of rock your, you just kind of rock your hand as you're going. And then these two little buttons here control, there's an electric motor on the snowblower, and I don't know how many attachments use this stuff, but uh, I know for the snowblower, the fellas explained to me that you push this button to, to control how far it, it throws. So you, it's electric, so if you push one, it goes up, and you push the other, it goes down. So you don't have to get out of the cab uh, to control any of that stuff with, with this machine. And uh, it's articulated too, so it's a very tight, a very tight turning radius, and you're literally just, uh, wow, that feels nice and smooth. You're literally just, you're going forward, back, and you're just kind of rocking your, your hand. And I'm sure, you know, it, it, I've only done this for about 15 minutes, a half hour so far, and there is a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, once you got it, I think it's a very natural, very natural thing. I know I was getting much better after my 15 minutes, half hour. And then here are our hydraulic connections for the, uh, the snowblower. So they're color coded and you've got two, you know, a feed and a return going to the blower. And then you've got uh, an electric connection, which isn't hooked up now because this is actually only the sweeper, but there's an electric one as well. And they just feed through the cab. So to disconnect the snowblower, all you would do is disconnect these two um, hydraulic fittings here, disconnect the electric, pull it through the cab, disconnect the belt, and you're done. And, and there's, a, there's a quick lift system on these guys. So what you do is, um, when you want to hook up your implement, you just, they put the mat because it's got the cab, but if you look through this hole here, you can kind of line up where you're, where you're hooking up. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't hooked an attachment up yet, and I know the first time it's probably not going to be pretty, uh, the same as it was with my other stuff. But uh, so I'm a little bit nervous because if we get a lot of snow, I got to put the, I got to put the blower on. But uh, I think it's one of those things you just got to do it, and and it'll all make sense. But um, that's you look through that hole to line up your implement, and then over here, this right down here is, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, there's a lever there which. Uh, connects and disconnects the, the lock for the implement. Okay, let's see if we can get this stuff in focus. So, so we're sitting, the steering wheel's here, we're going up, and so what we've got overhead here is uh, we've got the temperature of the cab, we've got three speeds for the fan, this controls the wipers on the cab. If you push it once, it's just gonna push it down, it's gonna have the wipers go once if you push it up the wipers are going to stay on, and then you've got your front lights and your real, rear lights on the cab. And I'm, I'm, I can't wait to go outside and give it a shot and see how, uh, see how bright these lights, uh, how light they are. They're all they're LEDs, and there's a lot of them. And then you've got three, uh, three fan, 
uh, things here, which you can which you can move around, move around the cab to, to move the heat. And then the seat I'm on is uh, it is adjustable, but uh, this is uh, this is what you're looking at. I mean, if you're doing if you're doing snow removal, uh, I got the camera pretty much right where my eyes are. So this is what you would be looking at. So that's just a quick overview of what the Ventrac's all about, how it works. Um, I think it's a pretty amazing machine. I'm looking forward to, to trying it out a little bit more later and, uh, and be out in the snow and not freezing my butt off. Uh, right now, uh, outside it's 24 degrees. Uh, I've got some heat in the garage, so it's not too bad right now. But uh, I'm really looking forward to, to being out in the storm, clearing it, and not have to deal with the wind blowing on my face and uh, have some heat. Uh, it's going to be fun. So, so this is going to be just the initial look at the Ventrac, and then maybe we'll get the GoPro out, and we'll see if we can hook the GoPro out and, uh, and do some snow clearing later when we get some more, and, uh, and take a look. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the Ventrac, feel free to put them below the video. And um, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Have a great day.